So we have a racquetball. If I put it in liquid nitrogen and then bounce it, will that make it bounce higher or not as high? Let's see. And so it's causing the liquid nitrogen to boil. So here we go. Not as high. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Burns, and I'm a science teacher here at Los Gatos High School here in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. Right now I teach AP Physics. It's a really tough class, and it's mostly juniors. Physics is trying to discover the laws under which nature works, and so it's fundamental to really every science. My best lessons are ones where there's some experience they have that they can't explain, and then they just, they're dying to know. Uh, it's like a itch that you have to scratch. Oh, come on. Uh, 3.15, I'm gonna call that success. So we have a pineapple pie pendulum with a period of pi. I do workshops for new physics teachers, and we show them how you can use liquid nitrogen in your class. I have no idea where I read this, that LEDs change color in liquid nitrogen. I just happened to have a green one. I stuck it onto a, a power source, and I was so surprised that the not only the change color turned to this vivid yellow, I go, I was like, whoa. And so it was a, a, a genuine reaction because I wasn't expecting it. Color is really a very subjective thing. And so a spectrometer allows you to nail that down. And so to a spectrometer, color is the intensity versus wavelength graph. It wasn't what it looked like to the eye. It looked like a, a shift from uh, green to yellow. But what was really happening, it, the spectrum just got narrower. So it's more taking the green out and letting you see more of the yellow that was already there, that made the yellow more apparent to the human eye. It gets down to a quantum physics explanation. Teaching physics, you can have them see something that doesn't agree with what they thought should happen, and then that usually gets them curious. And so I think that's the, the main thing, is, is come up with things that, that get people excited. You should never stop learning, and so they should like to learn. I think this class, it's about how to approach problems in life, even the ones we never faced before, and then that could extend to our life where we constantly face and meet new things and we don't know how to do about it. Having a systematic way to find the answer is something that's missing with a lot of the questions people come up with. And so whether it's a physics problem or not, problem solving skills, a lot of them are pretty universal. So I, I recommend everybody take it in high school.